Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to quite possibly one of the most miserable days of my life. But I received this day in the mail and I wanted to record me opening this box. Uh, I've been out of the hospital for a few days now, and I swear I feel worse now than I did the day before I went into the hospital. Uh, so, anyway, enough about me. We're going to go ahead and open this. And uh, let me get my sticker off of it. This would be my air compressor pump. Uh, uh. I have a feeling I need to go back to the hospital, but I'm scared they're going to make me worse than I, they already have. So that's the only reason I haven't went. Don't eat no more. I haven't been able to eat since I left the hospital. Uh, we got the owner's manual or instruction manual, so it's called. Uh. And it's probably a piece of shit, just like everything else I get. I never learned. But you can bet your ass, because I bought it, it's a piece of shit. There was something I didn't read right, or, or something that was missed. There'll be something wrong, that this thing is a piece of shit. You can bet your ass on that. And there's my pump. things there. They don't feel like much.
Then I had to get another pump for my air compressor simply because the pump that I used, I'm overworking it. Uh, I got to thinking about it, why it was working so hard, and um, the problem is the uh, pump that I have on it is only rated for, if I ain't mistaken, it came off of an air compressor that was only rated for like a hundred and 125 PSI and uh, I'm pumping the tank to 150 so I'm really overworking the thing too much so it's not the pump's fault it's doing what it can so uh, but I could be wrong but it seems like that's the case alright there's one filter uh, I'm probably actually wrong because I think it come off of this tank. Actually, I'm, I'm right. Uh, that came off of this tank right here. And this tank is saying maximum 100 PSI, so yeah, I'd say that's a stretch, but I don't think that was the original pump, I think that was an aftermarket pump, somebody had replaced it or something. Alright, well there's my pump, and uh, while I'm doing this, I'm going to do a review on uh, something else that I bought that I'm not none too happy about. I'd have been fine about it if the guy wasn't a jerk. Uh, so I guess if I'm going to feel bad today, I might as well make everybody else feel bad today too. As everybody knows, let me turn you over here to my chair and get my stuff together. As everybody knows, I tried to fix these boots. And I wasn't very successful at it. So I'm back to the drawing board with those. Alright, well then I went and bought another pair of boots that you guys seen in the last video. Well, that video brought out the uh, the hateful people who think that no one should ever complain about their product, whether it's wrong or whether it's right. Uh, and yeah, I was a little PO'd about that. Uh, you know, just because somebody uh, uh, complains about their product doesn't mean it's about somebody that's a, a, a good seller. Uh, I have a right to complain about something that was done wrong. And I'm going to complain if there's something wrong because, you know, too often, too often, these companies get away with murder simply because the customer does not want to deal with it. I'm not one of those customers. I will deal with it as long as they want to dish it out. Uh, and I'm sick of these companies getting away with murder and they're getting more and more and more every day. I'm not going to put up with it. And I don't care who of my subscribers like it. Uh, they can get glad because I'm going to complain when my order is wrong. 
Now, it depends on how nice I am. Or, or it depends on their attitude as to how nice I am to start off with. I will be the nicest person in the world. Until I find out that I don't have to be nice no more. And then all the gloves are off. Uh, and that's the case right here on what I'm getting ready to show you. I got the new boots. I went ahead and sent the other ones back. And, and I am very happy with what I got. Um, I got these boots right here. And they were nice enough to change the, uh, uh, well, let me, let me finish what, what, what happened. I went and I finally got a hold of them and, uh, ended up getting a hold of them on the phone. Now, he told me that the boots that were sent were the wrong ones. He also told me that the boot that was in the picture that I showed you guys in part one, they hadn't sold in a long time. So what does that tell you guys? What does that tell you? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that they sold something they didn't have. So naturally, when you go to order what they don't have, they're going to send you something that they do have. I mean, I'm not fucking stupid. Excuse my language. But, you know, why did it get put on the post? Why is it still posted as an item that they sell? That means that somebody in that company is not communicating with somebody else in the company. That means that somebody's not doing their job. And it's causing a problem that people like me have to deal with and then it turns a negative outcome for something that should have been ended in positive outcome. You know, I, I don't get it. Do your job. Yes, I understand that there's a, there's a moment where something happens that was unforeseen, but not every damn time. Not every order gets wrong. So, you know, it's, it's not me that's the problem. I'm not the one who is putting it in the package. I'm not the one who's shipping it out. I'm not the one who's carrying it to my house. I am out of control until it gets to my doorstep. Then it's my responsibility to open the package. Pretty simple. You can't get no simpler than that. So, people can blame me all they want for complaining about my order that they got wrong. And if you want to continue to complain, you're going to lose a friend. I can tell you that right now. And it ain't going to take long. So, lay off. But anyway, he says, well, we went and dug in the back, and we found this one. It's the closest thing that they could come up with. And I tried it on, and it seems like it's going to be a good work, working boot. Uh, it does have the features that, that um, well, no, it don't. I thought these were hooks. Um, well, that going. Well, it's still better than the eyelets. Um, I like the hooks. Uh, uh, better so that he said they had the speed speed lacers but that's not a speed lacer uh, let's see there again it just tells me what it what I want to hear I just now noticed that and I've had these for a couple of days now and I just now noticed these are not I just looked at them real quick and never really looked at it close enough to see that those are not hooks those are holes or eyelets that are protruding eyelets, I guess you would call them. Um, 
instead of this kind of eye, you got this kind of eye. Uh, they were supposed to be the speed speed lace where you hook. But anyway, that's fine. I can live with that. Uh, as long as the boot is comfortable and um, doesn't hurt me too awful bad. Um, it's been my experience that these kind of soles, the way they put these on, are never very good. I know that these are never going to last as long as these over there. Those, you're never going to find a boot like that again. Ever. You can search till the cows come home and you're never going to find a boot that will last as long as that one has. Uh, this one here, I give it, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a, I'm going to give it a time, because I'm, I'm that sure that this boot will probably not last, a year and a half, uh, and that's giving it some, uh, simply because I'm not as active as I used to be. Uh, now, if you'd ask me that same question uh, five years ago, these wouldn't have lasted me a year. I guarantee you these boots would not last me a year. Uh, I know how hard I am on boots. I know how, how much walking I do in a day's time. I know how much kneeling and, and I punish a boot because uh, I can't set still. Now it's getting so that uh, the doctors are making sure I set still because I can't never do nothing because I feel sick all the time. So anyway, uh, these boots are going to be okay. I, I'm I'm sure I'll, I'll I'll be okay with them. And these stink bugs are just awful here. So anyway. Alright, that led into another thing that I wanted to show. Uh, I, want, I still want to fix those boots. Well, I'm no professional when it comes to buying uh, soles to fix a boot. So, I figured I would just buy a set of soles and redo these boots and buy the shoe the actual shoe glue that that works for it so i bought the glue well, these are welco's you'll never you'll never find them again welco went out of business and he even told me why they went out of business uh that's their sister company uh because they weren't doing what they were supposed to they were trying to take advantage well i don't see any different in two companies but anyway, I got off track. So I went and bought some soles. Are you ready for this? Are you sure you're ready for this? I'm going to set this boot right here. Just like that. And then I'm going to bring this sole out here. And I'm going to show you what they sent me. Get ready. Here's what they sent me. Alright. Ain't no damn way in hell that's gonna work. Now, this is my fault. I know this is my fault. I didn't know what I was doing when I ordered the soles. And I thought that you had to buy big and trim down. I did not know that they were hollow in the side, inside of it, which you would not think they would be. They shouldn't be. I mean, why would they be hollow inside? And it's a good possibility I could have made that work. Have made that work if this wasn't hollow inside. But then I got to looking at it a little further because that hollow side is just about as big as the whole sole on this. So that's not going to work. And here's another freaking stink bug. I swear to God. And you kill them and they stink. And, uh, so I thought, well, let me look and see if this will work. Well, when I seen that that was too, just as big as the sole, the hollow part, it wasn't going to work. Uh, 
Right, then there was another good possibility that I could trim the outer edge here and make that work. But the problem with that is in order to put it in the right spot, which would have to be right about there, I wouldn't have very much of this left. So this is not going to work. So I asked the guy, I sent him a message, and I was laughing about it because, I mean, my God, look how big that is. You could swim in a pair of them boots. And I'd hate to see the man who actually wears that size. But that's a size 14. Yeah, it was my fault. Clearly, it's my fault. Uh, and I don't mind taking the blame for that. So I sent him an email, and I said, wow. Wow, that is a huge soul. I said... When I opened that package, I thought Bigfoot had entered the building. And I laughed about it. And I said, clearly, I ordered the wrong thing. And I said, I would like to see if we can do an exchange. All right, I was already prepared to eat the uh, uh, shipping cost because it's my fault. Uh, and I understand that he shouldn't have to spend no money either. Uh, but, you know, I admitted that I made a mistake, and I told him that. I said, uh, clearly I have made a mistake in ordering these. Uh, I thought that you had to order big to be able to trim down, because I never thought that there was a hole here. And I really didn't realize how big 14 was. Uh... And I probably should have done my research before I did this. And uh, the first thing he did, he started quoting the description. He was already working on his exit strategy. And that pissed me off. The very second he comes back to me, he doesn't say, uh, yes, we can do an even exchange or, or yes, we can exchange if you pay for shipping. I would have been fine with that. But he went right into quoting the description. Uh, sort of like a, a, a preacher would start quoting the scripture. He starts quoting this description. And, and, and it sounded like he had an attitude. And I said, really? You're going to start quoting the description? I've already admitted that I was wrong. I've already admitted that I'm the one who made the mistake. And you're going to get a dickhead attitude with me? I said, you know what? You keep your fucking souls. I'll keep these as a reminder of the dick that I bought them from. And uh, I'll keep these as a uh, something. I'll put tracks around the yard or something and, and make it look like Bigfoot's been here and... and Whatever, I, I'll use them for a novelty thing around here. Yeah, they were 20 bucks. And that's an awful expensive novelty item to have laying around your, your house. But I'll find something to do use these for. Even, even if it's just to use a pad to put it on the bottom of something to keep from destroying a floor. Uh, I don't know, but he hit me the wrong way and... Uh, uh, he was a real dickhead. Uh, you know, he had no call for that. I didn't need that kind of attitude. First of all, I wasn't feeling good enough for him to be fucking with me like that. And yes, you can excuse my language, and if you can't, oh well, sorry. Uh, uh, that's just the way it is. I cuss, and anybody who watches my channel knows that I cuss, and if they can't deal with it, then I think you're watching the wrong channel. Um, so, you know, now I'm back to the drawing board for getting my old boots fixed. Yes, they're ten and a half. Um, and I've been wearing the wrong size shoe all my life. Uh, simply because they are the most wonderful boots I've ever seen in my life. 
and these new boots that they sent me are nine and a half. That's what my size is. So I'm actually a full size bigger than I should be on these old boots. Uh, I just couldn't let them go because they were so good. Uh, be nice if I could get them fixed and resized at the same time, then I would have the perfect boot. Um, if anybody out there that fixes boots sees this, please, by all means, we can work out a deal. Uh, I'd like to have these boots fixed. And uh, I'm not going to take it up the ass to get them fixed, but, you know, I'll... I'll trade you something for getting them fixed. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on, rambling on. I guess this is uh, uh, going to be Bison Sick Chat. <laughs> but that's where I feel like crap, man. Uh, I haven't slept since I left the hospital. Uh, Ever since the morphine wore off, I have not been right. Uh, every place that they cut me, it feels like they're trying to bust open, and they're clearly not. They just feel that way. It feels like somebody's stabbing me in every place that they cut me. Uh, I haven't been able to eat. Every time I eat, uh, I took one bite of a brownie last night, and you would think that it was... It was uh, strychnine because it, it it felt like it was killing me. Uh, I, uh, I've tried soup. I can't get through it. My dog eats so well right now it ain't funny because every time I take one bite of something she ends up with the rest of it because I, I just can't do it. Uh, it goes down and it acts like it's, it's forcing itself back up my throat and when that happens I get sick to my stomach and feel like I'm going to puke. Uh, one time my, my whole throat filled up with nothing but bubbles and I couldn't breathe and that, it scared me that time. So I don't know what they're missing but I'm scared to go back because they done blowed this vein out. You can see how swelled it is right there. They blowed this vein out because it swelled right there. Um, these people, I mean, you can see how it's turning yellow right there. Uh, it looks like I'm a, a coke addict, uh, a shooting addict, because they've given me so many needles. Uh, I, I'm not well, guys. And, you know, I, people are texting me and, and you know, stuff like that. I'm just not into talking. So you guys are going to have to just give me a break for a while. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm not feeling very good. So I hope you guys feel better than I do. Anyway, you guys have a good one. Later.